<laughs> hey, when we're older, let's get married. Ha! You can't get married. Why not? Black people can't marry white people. Hey, now. It's Garnet from Steven Universe. Kids, don't be racist. Cut. Okay, people, we just need to get coverage. We'll start again in five. This is the cheesiest job I've ever done. Stuff like this doesn't actually happen in real life. <laughs> whoa, whoa there. Are you kidding? It totally does. Just because this has never happened to you doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. Seriously, I didn't know. Yeah, everyone messes up sometimes. But you gotta realize it hurts to deal with racism. And when people act like it's not real, it makes it feel even worse. You have to acknowledge racism to work against it. Thanks to systemic racism, most of your storytellers prioritize white accomplishments, which leaves you with an incomplete picture. Ask yourself as you're learning history, who's telling the story? Was this modified to make white readers comfortable? Are major details being left out that would credit people of color and center their point of view? Honestly, I should have asked for script approval before agreeing to do this. <laughs> John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami, the Generation Z equivalent, the Zoomer equivalent of the baby boomers. I just wanted to grill is now officially, I just wanted to watch cartoons, but you can't anymore. You can't just grill. You can't just watch cartoons. You can't sit on the sidelines. Your participation in these narratives will become mandatory, whether that's through propaganda and social engineering, state mandated diversity training, etc. You will be made to comply. And the left will say, well, this is actually a good thing because it'll finally solve racism. But the reality is that this exists as the predominant narrative because it makes people a lot of money and it gets them a lot of power and because this is a narrative that is inherently anti-American. And to this, the left will say, oh, well, so you're admitting that racism in America are inherently intertwined. That's missing the point. The point is that the solutions, at least the ones that aren't ambiguous grifts, which we'll talk about in a second, but the solutions that are proposed by these activists in terms of policy are all basically state-facilitated redistributions of resources, the methodology of which being whatever the woke mob deems fitting to solve racism. And that's in terms of wealth, job opportunities, educational opportunities, etc. And we've gone through in great detail before in other videos about how there's no legitimate evidence for systemic racism in America. But even that aside, if I can embody the archetypal conservative uncle for a second, the whole point of America is that you should be free to basically do whatever you want in terms of climbing the ladders, making something of yourself, pursuing the American dream, and that you should be free to do that without people coming in and messing up your stuff. But these people don't like America. We know that. And so they rightfully calculated that if you can mobilize minority groups to vote for you by saying, hey, uh, racism is your biggest problem and we're going to fight for you. And then you can open up the borders and flood the country with non-white immigrants, add the vast majority of them to that political capital, all while mobilizing your control of media, every level of education to convince the country as a whole that racism is the biggest problem. It's a public health crisis and, and we're the only ones who can fix it. It works out really well for permanently consolidating political power, especially when the solutions to these problems are not promoted publicly. Like if you look at the mainstream dialogue, you'll find all this information about how to be anti-racist because simply not being racist isn't enough anymore. Moral imperialism, that's the strategy. An effective strategy, we'll go through that in a second. But basically, the entire business of being anti-racist, which has made people millions, even billions of dollars, depending on your metric, basically exists as a circuitous rabbit hole of self-help for guilty white people. You read the articles, you read the books, they all tell you, educate yourself. On what? Who knows? But you go to this event, talk to these people, they'll tell you to read this thing, which will then tell you to listen to these people, etc. Or give money to these people, these organizations, these businesses. If you give money to a black restaurant, you're actually going to solve racism, etc. But there's no information for how we actually actually combat this issue? Like, how do we actually put boots on the ground, so to speak? And the reason for that is that it doesn't exist by necessity. There is no clearly defined solution because that would require an actual problem. But this narrative requires the existence of this vague boogeyman of racism, arbitrarily applied so as to keep those in power in control of you and in control of the narrative. You cannot as easily defeat a narrative that is not subject to the laws of reality. And even ignoring all the data that disproves that boogeyman, who exactly is racist? If we assume, and they do assume this, that it can only be white people, that's only like 60% of the population, right? What happens if we assume that a third of those people are anti-racist, they're woke? Then we're left with best case scenario being that 40% of the country is racist. Okay, now what about the percentage of those people that actually have the power that is required by their new definition to be racist? Pretty sure like a fifth of the country is under 18, so they wouldn't have any power, so now we're down to like 32% of the country is oppressing minorities. Okay, well how much of that 32% is actually in a position of legitimate power or influence as compared to just a normal job. Maybe like half 
if even that. So let's say we're down to like 16% of the countries responsible for systemic oppression of non-whites and also women and gay people, probably. Okay, what about the ability of these people to actually execute their agenda without being caught by the people who aren't racist? The 60% of people who are either non-white or woke white, maybe like another half or so, which would bring us to like 8%. And these aren't exact figures, right? It's just a thought experiment, but I would imagine that's approximately true. I would guess that at the best, this boogeyman at the most is 8% of the population. That's assuming that everything that they say about white people, about racism, that's all true. And then best case scenario, 8%. And that's the thing, we can talk all day about racism, but you actually have to identify the problems concretely and who is responsible for causing them, but they don't wanna do that because the point is not solving a problem. The point is gaining wealth and gaining power. And it's not even just white people anymore. They're actually starting to wake up to the reality of Asian privilege. So we might actually have to team up here, which works out well because white women are basically a lost cause at this point. And of course, if you're a white woman watching, I'm not talking about you. I'm sure that you get what I am talking about. And I already got crap from the ethno-nationalists because I called for a complete and total shutdown on white women until we can figure out what the hell is going on, but I'm inclined to take it further now. It might be time to fully endorse and commission the Eurohan Master Race. I don't know, but we're gonna go over these two videos from Cartoon Network. I do wanna make sure though that we're taking the right thing away from this, which is that conservatives are getting slapped in the face by the reality of woke capitalism. We have no idea how to seriously combat it. We have long associated capitalism as an inherent good, something that is always good for us. And then when it becomes woke, we think, oh no, it's okay. Let's use our power as rational consumers in a competitive market to boycott them. But the problem with that thinking is that it presupposes at least three false premises, which are that you have power, you don't, people are rational, they aren't, and the market is competitive. It isn't. So what's the solution to woke capitalism? What's the solution to corporate propaganda, privatized indoctrination, and social engineering? I have no idea. I've been thinking about it for the last nine months or so. I got nothing. That's not right. I have a couple ideas. We'll get to that later. The point is that these people literally cannot separate their politics from their lives. And that's not something that we should laugh at, right? That's not something that we should look down upon. That's something that we should actually emulate. We should be doing that too. It's simply not enough to assume the continuation of a power vacuum, to assume that everyone just wants to be left alone just like you do. You actually have to impose yourself. You have to have moral imperialism because otherwise you will be conquered and it's already happening to us. And every year we lose ground. Now your kids can't even watch cartoons anymore without seeing stuff like this. So let's go through it. One, two, three. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, when we're older, let's get married. Ha! You can't get married. Why not? Black people can't marry white people. Hey now. It's Garnet from Steven Universe. Kids, don't be racist. Cut. Okay, people, we just need to get coverage. We'll start again in five. This is the cheesiest job I've ever done. Stuff like this doesn't actually happen in real life. This is blatant propaganda. The cartoon people say, submit to the narrative. And it's probably, it's the most important thing to note about this, which is that people are gonna say, well, what's wrong with just telling kids to not be racist? And there's nothing wrong with that. But that isn't the effective purpose of this type of propaganda because it exists adjacent to and to serve the broader narrative. The end result of which is the unjust state facilitated redistribution of resources in the name of social justice. So it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things if this is just supposedly saying, hey, don't be racist because it exists as a means of recruiting and indoctrinating people into supporting the broader narrative. Plus again, It's a lot deeper than that with this one and also with the other one too, as we'll see. But I really like how the kid comes in and he's like, hey, you can't get married because you're different races. And I saw that and I was like, do do they actually think that's a thing that people say, let alone children? Why can't can't I be the black lady, right? Why can't I come up and be like, no, 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 they can't get married because they're both boys. And by definition, two men cannot get married. And it's been that way for virtually all of human history up until like, what, five years ago? Also, if the kid is racist, why does he get excited when the black lady shows up? And even after it cuts and the kid goes off, he still has an opinion. He's mumbling to himself that racism isn't even a problem. Problem. This type of stuff doesn't even happen, which is true, but that's not something that children talk about or even think about unless they're made to. And that's the biggest thing with this whole like, well, you know, what's wrong with just teaching them that being racist is bad because no child is racist. They'll play with whoever. No one cares. No one thinks about it, but they want to portray it such that this little white kid even went off camera is racist. When the camera's rolling, he's acting, he's epic and gay and woke and anti-racist, but off camera, he's got an opinion on the matter because all white people, even at age five, are intrinsically racist. Whoa there. Are you kidding? It totally does. Just because this has never happened to you doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Seriously, I didn't know. Yeah, everyone messes up sometimes. But you gotta realize it hurts to deal with racism. And when people act like it's not real, it makes it feel even worse. You have to acknowledge racism to work against it. You're right. I can do that. 
<laughs> you kids better work on this before the wedding. Whoa, that's just, We're just the script. <laughs> we only just met today. Did you notice how just like in real life, the woke white kid went to defend the black kid before the black kid could even speak? And they're all educating this white kid about racism, three versus one, so that kids watching feel as though if they don't unfailingly agree with this narrative, they will be outcast. It's literally psychological programming. It's also funny that they're like, just because it doesn't happen to you, doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. Like, no, no. It actually does happen to me quite often. Let's talk about systemic racism against white people with affirmative action programs that discount white people from positions in the workforce, in universities, graduate schools, with access to capital. The list goes on, but is that not systemic racism? Is that not a series of systems that treats white people less favorably exclusively because of their skin color? We can't talk about that, right? No one wants to relate to our struggle, boys. Y'all don't know what it's like being male, middle class, and white. That song is my anthem. Ben Folds leading the charge on the Congressional White Caucus, the forgotten gamers of America. That's a joke. The reality is that if you're white, you just have to shut up. That's why this kid had a negative attitude about this whole thing. His opinion seemed semi-developed, especially considering his age. And then the second he gets a little bit of pushback, he just melts like, I'm sorry, I'm ignorant, I don't know anything. Also, I don't know who's in charge of comms for Racism Inc., but the whole, hey man, racism hurts. That's not cool. That's not reflective of your ground game at all. I've never had a conversation, nor have I ever witnessed someone educating someone else about racism without hysterically screaming at them. Plus, wait a second, the kids are gay? You see how these narratives don't operate individually? They're all intertwined, they're all intersectional, if you will. Like the punchline of this whole thing is that the kids are actually gay, and then she winks. She winks that the five-year-olds are gay. I don't need to tell you what's going on there. Virtually none of this should come as a surprise to you. Also, how is the kid gay but also racist? I'm trying to square that. Like, ostensibly he wants to marry the black kid, but he's also racist. I don't know. Nothing makes sense anymore. I want to go off the grid. If only I had something that could help me do that. Wait a minute, there is. Allow me to shamelessly transition to product mode. It is I, yet again, but this time wearing different clothes, so you know that I'm just a regular guy much like yourself. And like most guys, there's a lot of stuff that we do online that we don't want anyone knowing about. I myself usually spend north of 25 hours a week exploring various obscure internet forms dedicated to stamp collecting, stamp resale, and counterfeit stamp manufacturing and distribution. This is simply not a part of myself that I'm willing to share with anyone, especially not the internet service providers and government agencies that track and store all of your data for their own agendas. Do you want that? Of course you don't. Let me tell you how to fix this problem. You go to expressvpn.com slash Doyle. You sign up with ExpressVPN, which is the highest rated and fastest performing VPN service in the game, and they're going to use science to encrypt all your data so that no one can touch it, including them. They have literally designed such an advanced system of data protection that even they themselves cannot access your data. They're also going to hide your location and enable you to say that you're wherever in the world that you'd like to be. If you want to watch content that isn't available in your country, if you want to watch Rick and Morty like a genius, this is how you do it. It's incredibly easy to use, and if something doesn't make sense or something isn't right, they've got 24-7 customer support so they can take care of whatever you need, whenever you need it, so you can get back to sticking it to the man. Properly defined as big government and big business. So head on over to expressvpn.com slash Doyle. Find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description. That is expressvpn.com slash Doyle. They're a friend of ours. It's a great service. I use it constantly, and you should be as well if you care about your privacy and your freedom. Very epic. Very epic. We love product mode, don't we, folks? But we've got another one of these that came out about a week ago that is arguably worse than the one that we just watched. So let's check that out. All right, class. Can anyone tell me who invented the light bulb? Thomas Edison! That's not entirely true. The light bulb could more rightfully be attributed to Louis Latimer, the black inventor behind the filament inside the bulb. His invention made light bulbs affordable and efficient enough for the general public, bringing electric light into households around the world. Well, so, so now, now you, you know. know. Wait, is that it? Hold on. We're not going to mention why he invented the filament? To create a better standard of living for people who had only just been freed from slavery? Are we going to ask why kids are apparently learning about Thomas Edison? Thomas Edison! Ugh. And not learning about Louis Latimer? These textbooks are incomplete. There were black Roman warriors, black medieval knights, black classical musicians, black cowboys, black fighter pilots. Where are they? I worry about you humans because you only live, what, about a hundred years? You rely on these stories to know your own history. Thanks to systemic racism, most of your storytellers prioritize white accomplishments, which leaves you with an incomplete picture. Ask yourself as you're learning history, who's telling the story? Was this modified to make white readers comfortable? Are major details being left out that would credit people of color and center their point of view? 
Honestly, I should have asked for script approval before agreeing to do this. We'll do some rewrites. I'm sorry. We didn't know. Well, so now you know. I swear. Again, the framing of this whole thing is very clever. Notice how she has to go off script. The white woman has to go off script. She's going to tell you like it is. You don't want to hear it? Maybe it makes you a little uncomfortable? Well, well, that's too bad because this woman has something to say. And the reason that they frame it like that is to communicate the impression that, well, they don't want you to know this stuff. They don't want you to know this information. They're hiding it from you. When information is distributed, well, they don't allow for this to be distributed. So she has to have this epic Reddit moment, go off, despite the fact that virtually every institution in our society is on their side, except like four, one of which being the MyPillow factory. God bless Mike Lindell. He's our ace in the hole. MyPillow nationalism. Also, why is she complaining about education? We don't even control education, that's them. So if she's mad that it's not talking enough about non-white people, that's really not our fault. And speaking of non-white people inventing things, Lewis Latimer's epic, he's high IQ, but how many white inventors can you even name? I can think of like five, maybe. So Lewis Latimer exists back when being an inventor was a legitimate job title. He had like half a dozen patents, very smart guy, very impressive resume, but they're really just spamming B with him. I mean, this is the guy they always talk about. Well, what about Latimer? What about Lewis Latimer? And it's like, yeah, he made the light bulb better. Light bulb's pretty important, but if you get into other non-white inventors, then you have to get into really really specific categories. Like, well, wh why aren't they learning about Elijah McCoy who invented an automatic lubrication cup that simplified transportation and travel by railroad? And it's like, sweetheart, you're talking about public school history class. You're not really going to achieve a level of depth that's greater than a fading memorization of like seven random dates and events. The fact that we even remember that Edison made the light bulb is a miracle in itself. Also, what better symptom is there for a woke consumerist society than people bitching that kids aren't learning enough about which minorities invented which products? I literally cannot think of any. It is the quintessential symptom. Plus she goes off like, well, why aren't we learning about black fighter pilots, black medieval knights, bitch? I can't even name white people that did that stuff. I just just know what happened. You could tell me right now that every medieval knight was actually African and it's like 50-50 that I believe you. We learn about this stuff in second grade. We build a castle out of shoe boxes and paper towel rolls. It's really not that deep. I can't name more than three white people in any of those categories and I'm actually pretty well read. I actually paid attention in school. But why is this a hill that we have to die on? Is this really like that perplexing to you? Like, why is it that the history of a historically white country is primarily focused on white people? Like, I don't know, that's a real fucking head scratcher, isn't it? Then she goes off on her epic rant, white men owned yet again, and they're like, I'm sorry, we didn't know, because everything is framed as, if you don't agree, you're uneducated, but once you learn the truth, you'll agree, and then if you don't, it's because you're racist, and this is why they're feeding that to your kids, and you can't escape it anymore. You can't just send them to private schools. You can't keep them off the computer for more than an hour a day or whatever. It is everywhere. And it's only going to accelerate from here. And if we don't do something about it, then it will eventually be state mandated, if not already effectively speaking, like that your kids are indoctrinated into these narratives under the guise of social justice and equity. Hey guys, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications and share the video with a friend. I'm sorry, was that a little fast? My biggest complaint, well, you talk too fast. Yeah, sorry for being high energy. Actually, I'm not, I'm not sorry for being high energy, but I'm just trying to get you in, get you out. You know, you watch the video, I appreciate that. I have one last thing to ask. It's like a physics problem. You got 4A, 4B, 4C, etc. We've got a little five, five prong problem for you here. I will repeat though, because we're doing this quickly. No more minute and a half outros. Those are funny though, those are pretty based. But anyways, <clears throat> rolling. Hey guys, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications and share the video with a friend. Share the video with a friend. Turn on post notifications, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, thumbs up on the video. It builds bonds. We will establish a community. What if this was the whole video? What if we just did this for 25 minutes? I wonder how the like to dislike ratio would, would continue, or I guess would progress. Would people be like, I don't like it when he does this? Or would people be like, yo, this is epic. Analyze what he's talking about. Q, Anon, deciphering. John Doyle is Q confirmed. Maybe. That's on my 2020 bingo card. I don't know about yours. Maybe I should decorate for Christmas. We already got, I mean, the birthday boy right here. My favorite thing is when people get mad because I have a Jesus bobblehead. That's offensive. That's blasphemous. Why do you hit Jesus? I don't hit Jesus. I hit the bobblehead so it bobbles. Obviously, what am I going to do? Not allow it to bobble? That would be unnatural. First, you say, don't let the bobblehead bobble. Next, you say, kids should be allowed to marry goats. That's the slippery slope. I'm actually being socially conservative by letting the bobblehead bobble. And if you don't agree with me, you're just not intelligent enough to understand my argument. Many such cases. But thank you so much for watching. May God bless America. 